with that pinging and belting, which is um, about 20 to 30 minutes from the base. They tell me, no, the pinging is wrong. It's actually here in the base in Fort Hood. I had a feeling that they were lying. I get the call from Tim Miller and um, he's in charge of EquiSearch and they were assisting with the whole search. He's very honest with me and he describes to me exactly what was found. I'm choked up now is one of the saddest calls I've ever made in my life. And I said, honey, yes, they, they have found remains. We found the burn pile and, uh, and leaves and branches were burnt about 15 feet up in the trees. They mixed up concrete, they dug the grave, they put some lime in the grave, they went ahead and poured concrete over top of it, put dirt over that, put rocks over top of that. They spent time. At that point, um, it was very hard to, to believe it was her, but deep down I knew it was her. And then you get the news that Erin Robinson, her killer, had committed suicide. Is it true that he was being guarded by an unarmed soldier? The fact that they claim that he was under watch, yet he still managed to, to, uh, to escape or either they let him go because if they really wanted to chase him, they, they, would, they would have chased them down. Do you believe that there is a cover-up regarding Vanessa's death? I do. Why? I strongly believe that more people know about it and you know they just don't want to speak on it because if you saw or if you knew and you kept quiet until now, it just makes you as guilty as Robinson. Myra, what can you tell me about Vanessa's sex harassment at Fort Hood? We did discover that it wasn't just one occasion where she was sexually harassed, but it was multiple and by multiple soldiers. She told my mother at some point. She also went ahead and told her best friend and a couple of soldiers in the base. I kind of understand and see why Vanessa didn't speak up to who she, who she was supposed to. And if she did, they're hiding it from us because when I do ask, did she ever file a report? They don't give me an answer. They just tell me because of the privacy act that they have that they can't answer that question. What was Vanessa like growing up? She was always a very active, joyful person. Um, she laughed at everything, even at the most serious situations. She was so easy to get along with. She would start acting out <laughs> like if she were in some type of a movie and uh, like those um, action movies, war type of movies. She would always say, oh, you know, I, I, I wanna be like them. And it was usually soldiers. Can I ask you, as you think back, Myra, what is your most vivid recollection of Vanessa? The last time that, um, that I saw her was the Sunday um, that she left back to Fort Hood. We shared dinner together. You know, you're never ready to say goodbye to a person. Me and Vanessa weren't the type to hug each other. And that day, for some reason, I, I did tell her that I loved her and I was proud of her. And she did the same and she left. I did have a, a dream of her um, the other day. She was really happy and um, she told me that everything was gonna be okay and that she had to go, but that she loved us. If this bill would have been in place at the time of the sexual harassment, I feel that it could have been stopped a long time ago and she could have pursued her career in peace. I continue to pray for you and your mother. Thank you. I think you. about you guys a lot. Thank you, Myra. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Nancy. A total lack of transparency 
a mountain of glaring evidence. Thank you, Nancy. A total lack of transparency. A mountain of glaring evidence exposing undeniable negligence at America's single largest military base. Our next guest says the barrage of blatant lies that both she and Vanessa Guillen's family were force fed in the wake of Vanessa's murder can only suggest one thing, a cover up. With me right now, a very special guest, the lawyer for Vanessa Guillen's family. Her name, Natalie Kawam. Natalie, thank you for being with us. Natalie, as the days and weeks and months pass since Vanessa's murder, I see very little changing at Fort Hood. We had a change in leadership. They put in a new general there. There's a congressional investigation and two other investigations, so hopefully we'll be able to get to more answers versus more deaths. Tell me your understanding of what first happened in this case. They said when Vanessa disappeared uh, that immediately her, her unit started looking for her when that in fact did not happen. We were shocked that they went on national TV to say that they were the ones who figured out that Vanessa was missing. So they're still lying. lying. And this Correct. is with the new guy in charge. Correct. Nothing has changed the worst That's possible outcome. Vanessa Guillen died a horrible death, a 20 year old private first class wanted the army, the military to be her career, was being sex harassed, too afraid to say anything about it, afraid she'd be blackballed. She was murdered, dismembered with a machete. They tried to burn her body. They poured wet cement onto her skin and as a way to try to cover up her body. And now they're rewriting history. So her supervisor that allowed her to be called in on her off day in her civilian clothes she was then murdered. The day after the criminal investigation division interviewed closest friends and Aaron Robinson and a few other people who was last seen with Vanessa. And they took the phones of her friends, but they didn't swipe Aaron Robinson's phone till several weeks later, even though everyone that was part of the investigation said that Aaron Robinson was the last person to be seen with her. Aaron Robinson was changing his story and Aaron Robinson seemed suspect. They still didn't swipe his phone, but they swiped everyone else's phone. She was called in on a non-work day to work and she was called in, my understanding is, by her killer Aaron Robinson, who then allegedly enlists his lover, uh, Cecily Aguilar, to help destroy Vanessa's body in, in a horrible, horrible way. Was Aaron Robinson her superior? Till this day, no one will tell us that answer. They say that he's not her superior, but he outranked her. You know why I don't like that? Because uh, it could be made to look as if she went to go meet him of her own volition, that she Correct. wanted to have some sort of a tryst with him. Nothing was further from the truth. And how is it that somebody that's not your superior can call you in to work on your off day? He was the same guy she talked about to her family and friends and reported that he made her very uncomfortable when he walked into the shower with her. Do you have any knowledge, Natalie, whether Fort Hood brought in a forensic team to look for blood? They said that they did that on the 72nd day after her remains were found and after the confession. Who knows why they would not have just done that immediately. What I also find ironic, Nancy, is when we first went down to Fort Hood, they showed us the armory room and they showed us the wrong room. It wasn't the room that she was killed in. You know, I said on day one, that Vanessa was seen coming into Fort Hood, but she was never seen leaving Fort Hood. And I always thought whatever happened to her happened at Fort Hood. And I was always curious about how she was removed from Fort Hood. And now we know. What did you learn, Natalie? I gotta tell you, Tim Miller of EquiSearch has been incredibly incredibly uh, vital in the whole investigation throughout the whole process. We were learning information from him, not from the military. Even till this day, they're changing their story. They don't treat their soldiers like human beings. 
Non innocent mistake. Somebody actually seen somebody in one of them big pelican cases, about three foot by three foot, one of them big plastic cases, and he was really struggling to go ahead and get this into his vehicle. And then we actually found a burn pile when we was out there, and probably about 40% of the lid of that pelican case did not burn. So when we found that, it was like, oh my God. Why wasn't Fort Hood out looking for her? They knew something was horribly wrong. Vanessa's family just felt like it was important for them to do the search for Vanessa because they didn't feel like they were gonna get any answers, which they never got, other than lies, from Fort Hood. And then, lo and behold, we hear that remains have been found. They're the remains of another Fort Hood soldier, Gregory Weedle Morales. And he's buried just yards away from Vanessa. It's quite the coincidence, is it not? I knew there was something wrong, and I tried to file a missing person report. They wouldn't take it. His phone was never dead. He made sure he charged it. And from the first time we tried to reach him, it it just went straight to voicemail. He went from a wall to deserter. Yeah. He has been murdered and found in a shallow grave. And the only reason he was found is because Vanessa Gia went missing. It hadn't been for the search for Vanessa, they would never have found Morales. And they just called him a wall. You know, the way that they just lied and covered up their own problems to make it look like it's the soldiers that had the issues really was despicable. So how do you have any faith that a real investigation is happening? I don't buy it for one minute. I'm starting to realize, I think everybody has been lied to for years at that base, and that's why we have 30 people dead. By the way, Nancy, 30 people dead, it's more than 30 people that try to kill themselves. That base really has some issues with the way that they treat their soldiers and the reporting that they do. I don't think they're reporting everything, quite honestly. Do they think we're all idiots? Yeah. Just because they put another guy in charge of Fort Hood, it looks like nothing is changing. Nothing seems to be happening. What, do they think we're just going to forget about Vanessa? We have our bill, you know, the I am Vanessa Guillen bill. How many more people have to die until this bill gets put on the House floor for a vote? It's not fair. I guess it's politics, politics. as usual. And politics Vanessa's usual. family is caught in the middle being tortured. We met with the president in the Oval Office and he, you know, told the family how sorry he was about what happened. And he heard that she was such a, a great soldier. She was a great person. He got the FBI involved and he got the DOJ involved. And he said that he was going to make sure that they did a proper uh, burial. He would take care of the funeral expenses. He gave them that feeling of, we're all with you in this. This is not this is not a Democratic, Republican thing. This is about your family and America. What I found shocking is, till this day, the Secretary of the Army has not met or called this family. Till this day. And he wants to say that he's busy. And I said, really, you're more busy than the United States of America's president? I'm just stunned that after all this, even meeting with the president, Fort Hood is still lying and stonewalling Vanessa's family. Have any witnesses come forward to testify about what happened to Vanessa? Uh, one of the generals said that they did an investigation with all the soldiers on the base and found that there was no sexual harassment. I contacted immediately one of the colleagues of hers. Four of the people, ready for this, told the staff, the chief, that interviewed them about the sexual harassment and about her disclosing it to them and about what they saw. They told this guy what happened and they wrote it down for him. He said, can you put this in writing? He wrote it down and then what happens? We watch TV, press conference, and they say nothing was ever substantiated, no, no, uh, no uh, allegations of sexual harassment. I thought I was gonna fall over when I heard this from this soldier. They, they are just the most repulsive, vile command I've ever seen in my life. And I love the military and I love our troops and I love them. These guys just kept on lying, lying about Vanessa's whereabouts, lying about what their investigation was, lying about the people that they interviewed that disclosed to him that she was being sexually harassed and continue to lie to keep their jobs. I thought I'd seen it all until I went to Fort Hood. You are also representing the family of Sergeant Elder Fernandez. Elder Fernandez was found dead he was hanging from a tree 
just a few days after he reported sex abuse at the hands of his superior. Now, all of this is in the shadow of multiple shootings, a child's sex and prostitution ring, and a so-called boys club culture at the most crime-ridden base in the U.S. I'm convinced there's a cover-up. I agree. And unless the congressional investigation starts immediately, I'm afraid the evidence, what little there is, is going to be destroyed. Have you seen any active steps, any real steps? There's three ongoing investigations. I have yet heard back from any of them of what their findings are, what they investigate, or what they're looking into. When Vanessa first went missing and her body was found and everyone was screaming, justice, 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 now it's all but forgotten and nothing has changed. Natalie Kawam with me. We wait as justice unfolds, God willing. Thank you, Natalie Kawam. Thank you, Nancy. Next, an emotional outcry for justice at our nation's capital. Americans band together and demand answers from Congress and from our military following multiple mishandled murders at Fort Hood. But who, if anyone, will ever be held accountable? This is a Fort Hood investigation with Nancy Grace.